Howdy folks, that's Mr. Pete, your YouTube shop teacher. Welcome back to my series entitled What Is It? And this is episode number 70B, the answer portion. Be sure and go back and watch 70A, the question. If you would be interested in that, I'll put a link in the description. And uh, these are the five tools, and I'm going to identify them right now. We had some real good answers, and I think most of them were correct. A few funny ones, so go back and read through the comments too. You might get a kick out of some of that. So let's get started here with item one. Quite a few people knew that number one is a key impressioning tool used by locksmiths. And uh, this one was designed by a man by the name of Patrick Pend. And he was uh, from Ireland. Did a nice job on this. I'm not sure exactly how it works, but the whole idea here is when you take a blank key and you're trying to fit it into a lock without a key, you sharpen up the edge here a little bit with a file and you merely insert it into the lock and you wiggle it around and the pins will make a tiny impression so you can start filing your key. Now, I have no idea whatsoever, nor did anybody mention what this squeezing handle is all about. But you would wiggle that around and supposedly leave tiny little impressions there. I do not know. I've never actually used it. It's probably not that easy to use. Take some skill. Thank you, Pat, for inventing this. Quite a few people knew what item two was, and it's, well, let me read it right off of here. It's a lead bender, model N-400, there's a patent, and uh, made by the Harwell Company out in Santa Monica. But, again, what's it for, lead bender? Well, let me show you. You probably watched my recent video where I, well, I put the, the name down at the bottom. It's a tool hoard. It was a two-part video. And there were three big bags of electronic components, resistors, capacitors, you name it. And so this man that owned all this stuff was very interested in locksmithing and electronics and other things as well. But let's take a look here at... A resistor. Well, that may not be a resistor because it doesn't have a color code. I don't want to argue about that. Here's one that is a res resistor, and I know it. So what you do when you are assembling a circuit, and this wouldn't be done anymore because everything's integrated circuits, but the little prongs here were the measuring device that you would measure the two holes in the circuit board and adjust it for whatever the size of the component is, and then... Actually, this resistor is beyond the capacity of this little device. Here's a slightly smaller resistor, and it's put in there. And these are like really little vice clamps. That's all it is, is a clamp. And then you, you bend them down. I guess that's how it's used. Seems almost too simple, doesn't it? But it would give you a consistent bend. And then release this. Out it comes, and it's ready to install. Nice, neat bend. So that's what we're talking about here with a lead bender. Item three is a wire stripper, and I did not know that because it almost seems too complicated, and it's Jokari, made in Germany, so it's real nice quality. And someone said it's for flat wire, stripping flat wire, like the old telephone wires, and I don't know what all, but I've got a piece of kind of flat wire here, and I don't know, I thought this was a little wire cutter here, but I think it's a crimper to mark it where you want to strip it. Like that. I might be wrong, correct me, I know you will. Well, come on. Works pretty nice, doesn't it? And, of course, it's right along the lines of this other type of stripper, which I'm more used to. All right, on to number four.
Item 4 from John DeRosa. Thanks, John. It's a tiny little torque wrench. That's all it is. And now I do remember what this was for from hanging around the auto shop teacher at the high school. And it is very specific. It is for tightening battery terminals on the old side terminal car batteries, which would be very easy to strip out the lead fitting if you tightened it too tight. So I'll set this up so you can see it. And we just turn it, and it's probably the simplest form of a torque wrench, the cheapest to make. I believe it's a KD tool. There is a patent number here. I'll show you the patent. Two patents. Made in USA, but there is no label underneath here. I thought it would say KD tools, and it does not. Let me show you the patents real quickly. Here's the patent from 1969. It seems to me that's about the time they came out with those side terminal batteries, but I could be wrong. I don't think they use them anymore, thank goodness. And I'll have still pictures of these. I won't show the other one here at the end of the video with the other stills. I think consumers rejected this whole idea here of the side terminal batteries because they made an aftermarket terminal here that would turn that side terminal into a regular post. I've got the little hex screw, I believe it's a 5 16 or 3 8 and this is a 6 point socket and you just tighten it up that tight. It sure doesn't seem very tight to me but I suppose some big gorilla was stripping them out. And finally Item 5 given to me by my long-distance girlfriend, Sarah, out in California. This is a Miller's Falls, that's the brand, number 218 tubing cutter. So, you remember the sight glasses on furnaces and boilers and all of that to show the water level? And also there are sight glasses on the side of many other tanks that are used industrially. And the whole idea here is this can be used in the following manner to cut the tubing to length. And the name Greenlee is right here. I'll show you a close-up of that. And their graduations are on here so you can determine, you know, you can set the length. And there's a tiny little wheel right here and a bit of a V-block. Now I know you can't cut Pyrex test tubes, but the idea here is as follows, set, set the depth stop or the length stop just like that and you would rotate it and it would score the glass tube on the inside. I'm not squeezing it hard enough to do that, but you kind of get the idea here and then the tubing, which would be quite a bit thicker than this, could be broken off to length. Pretty neat tool. Thank you, Sarah. And it was kind of a coincidental that in the last episode I showed this glass cutter for, actually it's a compass for cutting circles. And, you know, somebody told me that there might have been rubber on here or one glazer said that they used uh, clay or something to hold that in position so it didn't skate around on you. Some of them had suction cups, as I recall, or as someone told me. And again, the mystery here of why there is a left hand or, yeah, screw right here so that it will not... In this direction, it's going to unscrew in your hand, but when you go... Clockwise, it is tightening. Whenever you see a left-hand thread on anything, there is always a reason for it. They just do not arbitrarily do that to be ornery. Although it seems that way, doesn't it? Well, that completes this episode number 70. Thank you very much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up, a like, and all that good stuff if you're so inclined. Be sure and go back, and there are a total of 140 videos on my 
what is a series. You may enjoy some of the older ones. And this is Mr. Pete saying so long, and I'll see you next time.